Hey guys, this is StormGavari88 again. Now I'm sure most of you have heard that there are a lot of huge American military bases all over Okinawa, and that American servicemen are committing horrible crimes and causing horrible accidents. Well in today's video, I'll be going over the how and why these bases came about, and also looking at the future of this issue. So to start off, there are just over 40 military installations on Okinawa and surrounding islands, which take up about 20% of Okinawa's total land area. There are somewhere around 40,000 military personnel from the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Air Force, plus their families and civilian contractors. The two biggest units stationed in Okinawa are the 18th Wing at Kadena Air Force Base and the 3rd Marine Expeditionary Force at Camp Butler. Most Okinawan people want the bases removed from the islands, but naturally the American and Japanese governments want them to stay. So now that I've laid out the current situation, let's step back in time and talk about how we got here. While fortifications have existed in Okinawa since at least the 6th century, the castles and forts that we can see today were built between the 11th and 18th centuries by the native Ryukyuan people. When Japan annexed Ryukyu in 1879, the Imperial Japanese Army naturally occupied the most strategically important forts and castles, most notably Shuri Castle. The Japanese added on to the old Ryukyuan fortifications, resulting in an island fortress, complete with airfields, naval guns, anti-aircraft guns, and an interconnected system of underground bunkers. While most of the Japanese fortifications and bases were destroyed during the Battle of Okinawa, a lot of them were actually rebuilt and used by the American military in preparation for the invasion of Japan, although that never came to fruition. However, the Ryukyu Islands remained in American control after World War II, and the start of the Korean and Vietnam Wars made Okinawa an important launching point for the American military. In order to facilitate this, New bases were built, and existing bases were expanded, often at the expense of the Okinawan people, who were forced out of their homes, sometimes at gunpoint, so that their land could be used for the bases. Now Japan was also occupied after World War II, but this ended with the Treaty of San Francisco in 1952. This left the United States controlling the Ryukyu Islands, however. But in 1954, the U.S. gave the Amami Islands back to Japan, leaving them with just modern Okinawa Prefecture. Japan began immediately claiming that Okinawa was the lost prefecture, and that it needed to be returned to its homeland. Within Okinawa itself, at first there was a strong movement for an independent Ryukyu, but this independence movement slowly turned into a reversion movement, as independence seemed more and more unlikely and as Japan began promising that the American bases would be removed if Okinawa was returned to Japan. However, the Okinawan people did not forget about Japanese atrocities from the Imperial Era, as exampled by the Koza Riot, where both American and Japanese flags were burned. But the United States was not going to just give up Okinawa, because being the keystone of the Pacific, it was literally at the center of every major issue in East Asia. Even with today's issues, the South China Sea, Taiwan, and North Korea are all within a 1500 mile radius of Okinawa. So without any input from the Okinawan people, the United States and Japan drafted the Okinawa Reversion Treaty and the Status of Forces Agreement, which allowed for the United States to maintain its military bases while allowing Japan to regain administrative control over the Ryukyu Islands. This brings us back to today where the independence movement has re-emerged and anti-base protests occur daily. Meanwhile, because of Japan's multiple disputes with its neighbors, especially over the Senkaku Diaoyu Islands with China, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe not only supports keeping the bases there, he also supports building a new base at Henoko. What most media outlets overlook or fail to mention is that the base at Henoko is supposed to be a joint U.S.-Japan base. But this base at Henoko wouldn't even be the first Japanese base in the Ryukyu Islands, for they have many bases in Okinawa, Amami-Oshima, Miyako, and the Yayama Islands. You heard right, the Japanese military, the so-called self-defense force, 
has military bases in Okinawa, and they're building more. Okinawa's governor, Takashi Onaga, was elected on the campaign promise that he would remove the military bases, and so far has done everything he can to block the construction of the base at Hinoko. Unfortunately, as long as Okinawa is strategically important in an area of interest riddled with conflict, it will remain under American and Japanese occupation for the foreseeable future. But that will never stop the Okinawan people from protesting for their freedom. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and if you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments section below. My next video will be on the Senkaku Islands dispute, so until then, see you next time.